Hi, my name is John Irwin and I'm with CNS Driver Training Center. Today we're going to talk about the new CDL modernized testing, specifically on the pre-trip inspection. On your screen you'll see a new CDL driver's checklist. This checklist is found in the CDL driver's manual. You may bring this checklist along and check off the boxes as you inspect those items. All right, let's get to it. As the CDL Class A checklist states, we're going to start in the cab first. We're going to start with our air brake check. With our wheels chocked, I am going to turn on the truck and perform a safe start. So I've started the vehicle and now I am monitoring my air pressure gauge. I'm making sure that the air pressure gauge is working correctly and that the governor is going to cut off between 120 and 140 PSI. All right, now that I told the examiner that it cut off at 122 PSI, I am going to perform the second part of the air brake check. I am going to shut the truck off, turn my key to the on position, push in the valves. I'm going to press the brake. As soon as I see my air gauge stabilize, I am going to time myself for 60 seconds and make sure in a combination vehicle that my vehicle does not lose more than four PSI in one minute. You may ask the examiner to time you or you can use your watch or cell phone. It has been one minute. I will tell the examiner that I have not lost more than four PSI within that minute or 60 seconds. For the third part of the air brake check, I am going to fan my brakes until my warning devices come on. They should come on before 55 PSI. My warning device came on at 56 PSI. Now I'm gonna continue fanning my brakes until the valve protections pop out. They should pop out no later than 20 PSI and not before 45 PSI. All right, my valves popped out at 30 PSI. With that, I'm now gonna build my air back on. I'm gonna do a safe start. And I have completed the air brake check. All right, so next I'm gonna be checking my light indicators. I'm gonna turn on my vehicle. And my ABS light has came on and went out. My DEF indicator is working properly. My left turn single, my right turn single working properly. My four ways and my high beams. All indicators are working properly. All right, now after I pass my air brake test, I'm going to continue on through the Class A CDL checklist. Now I am going to perform a parking and trailer brake check. So first, I'm going to push in the parking brake. I'm gonna put it into drive. I'm gonna make sure that it holds and it held. Then I'm gonna to switch to my trailer brake, put it in drive and make sure that it holds and it held. Now with both of the both of the parking brakes, parking and trailer brake released, I'm gonna put it in drive. I am going to go five miles per hour and then put on my brake. The service brake is working, so I will set it in neutral and set my parking brakes. All right, I'm gonna check my emergency equipment. Over here, I have my three red triangles. Up top, I have my fuses for the truck, at least six. And then down here, I have my fire extinguisher that is secured and fully charged. Next, I'm going to check out my windshield and my traffic monitoring devices. My windshield is clean and clear. There's no illegal stickers. It's not cracked or broken in any way. I'm going to check my traffic monitoring devices, also known as my mirrors. I'm going to make sure that they're clean, clear, not broken in any way, and that they're properly adjusted for me. 
After that on the checklist, I'm going to go to my windshield wipers and my washer fluid. I'm going to check to make sure that the washer fluid is coming out and working, that the wipers are clearly removing all the debris and fluid off, that the wipers are not cracked or broken, and that the blade is not torn or frayed. Next, I'm going to demonstrate that my heater works and that my defroster system works. And it does. After that, I'm going to check the horn, the city horn, and the air horn. After that, I'm going to let the examiner know that my in-cab inspection has been completed. Once the examiner confirms that my in-cab inspection is completed, we are going to go on and do the light check. All right, I let the examiner know that I want them to check the front of my vehicle and both sides of my vehicle, making sure all the lights are working. He will then go to the back of the vehicle after we've completed the front. So first, I'm going to say right turn single, left turn single, four ways, my running lights, my headlights, my high beams. Now can I have you go to the back of the vehicle and check that? So now that he's back there, I'm going to do my left turn single, my right turn single, my four ways, my brake lights, and then my clearance lights. After he's given me the thumbs up for all that, we can go outside. Starting with all the lenses in the front of the tractor, we want to make sure that they're the proper color, secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and none are missing. Next, we're going to go to the critical fluid levels. Under the hood, we're going to check the coolant reservoir. Looking at the coolant reservoir, we can see that it is between the minimum and maximum line. We're going to go over and check the oil level. We're going to pull the oil dipstick and make sure that it's in safe operating level. We're going to pull it out, wipe it clean, stick it back in, and pull it out and check the oil level, making sure that it's in between the minimum and maximum line. Next, we're going to check the power steering reservoir. We're going to make sure that the fluid is at the proper level. If it has a sight glass, we're going to check the sight glass for proper level. If it has a dipstick, we're going to do the same thing as the oil dipstick. We're going to pull it out, wipe it clean, stick it back in, pull it out, and check the proper level to make sure that it is between the minimum and maximum line. Next, we're going to check the fluid and air leaks. We're going to first look for any puddles on the ground, look for dripping fluids around and on underside of the engine and transmission. We're going to inspect the hoses to make sure that the hoses have no abrasions, cuts, or bulges, and that they're not leaking. We're also going to do the same thing with the air hose and check that there's no abrasions, cuts, or bulges, and we don't hear any air leaks. Next, we're going to check the steering system. Checking the steering shaft and column to make sure it's secure, not cracked, or bent, or broken. We're going to ensure that all the steering hoses and connections are not cracked, worn, or leaking. We're going to make sure that the steering box is securely mounted and not leaking. We're going to inspect the steering system that it makes sure it has no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. Inspect the visible connecting links, arms, and rods from the steering box to the wheel are not worn or cracked and that the joints and sockets are not worn or loose. Next, we're going to check the tires, making sure that they're the same size and same type. Using a tire tread depth gauge, the front steering tires should be no less than 4 30 seconds in all major grooves, and that makes sure that they're all wearing evenly. Looking at the sidewalls, we're making sure there's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Checking the valve stem, the metal valve stem must be secure, straight, not cracked, bent, or broken, or leaking. All caps are present and tight. Tire pressure should be between 100 and 110 PSI. Check cold with a tire gauge. Next, we'll be looking at the rims, making sure they're secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, is round, and no illegal welds. We're gonna, next, we're going to check the lug nuts. Secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and none missing, and appear to be all tight. On aluminum rims, look for a white powder. On a steel rim, look for a rust, which would indicate a loose lug nut. We want to make sure that all lug nuts are not loose, and there are no signs of rust trails or shiny threads that may show looseness. Inspect that there are no broken studs. 
Next, we're gonna check the springs, the mounts, and the shocks. Spring hangers and shackles secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and none missing. Springs are secure, aligned, and straight, not cracked, bent, or broken, and none are missing. We're gonna check the shocks, secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and none are leaking. We're also going to inspect that the vehicle is sitting level, front to rear, and side to side. If it is leaning to one side or the other, that could mean a suspension issue. Next, we're gonna look at the brake lines, hoses, and any leaks. We're gonna inspect that hoses or lines that supply air to the brakes are not leaking. We're gonna look for any cracks, worn or frayed hoses or lines. We're gonna inspect that all the hoses or line couplings and fittings are secure. Next, we're gonna look for any brake contaminants. Contaminants could be grease, oil, or any other debris in the pads or brake drum that could affect braking capabilities. Next, we're gonna to look to the side of the vehicle for lenses and reflectors. We're gonna inspect that light lenses and covers on the sides of the vehicle and trailer are the proper color, clean, clear, not broken or missing. We're gonna look at the reflectors on the sides of the vehicle and trailer are the proper color, clean, clear, not broken or missing and adhered to the vehicle. Next, I'm gonna be checking all my mirrors, make sure that they're secured to the truck, not cracked, bent or broken, nothing missing. If equipped, rear and side view monitoring devices or cameras must be clean to view from the inside. Next, we're gonna check the battery electrical system. We're gonna inspect that the batteries are secure if visible, inspects that the connections are tight and should not show signs of excessive corrosion, inspects all electrical system cables and lines are secure, not cracked or worn, inspect the battery box cover or door is secure. If you cannot get to the batteries, don't worry, all you have to do is state those items. Next, we're gonna check the DEF tank and the fuel tank. We're gonna inspect that all fuel and DEF tanks are equipped and securely mounted, caps are tight, and that there are no leaks from the tanks or lines. Next, we're gonna check out the frames. With a combination vehicle, you need to check out the truck frame and the trailer frame. You're making sure that both frames are secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and no illegal wells. You're expecting holes in the cargo area of the floor, including in the trailer area. If you have a trailer tandem axle, you must inspect that trailer tandem release lever and pins are secure. Next, we're gonna check the air and electrical lines on the tractor and the trailer. We're gonna expect that the air and electrical connectors on the power unit and trailer are seated and sealed free of damage and locked into place. Next, we're gonna do the inspection of the air hoses and electrical lines. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and no audible leaks. We're gonna listen for any leaks in the air lines. Next, we'll inspect the electrical lines and air lines, making sure that they're not tangled, crimped, or pinched, dragging against the vehicle parts or the ground. Next, we're gonna check out the fifth wheel. We're making sure that it's secure to the frame, not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present and tight. No illegal welds. Also, we're gonna inspect for proper lubrication. Going to the kingpin, apron, and gap, we're gonna inspect the kingpin is in place and not bent, broken, damaged, or worn. We're gonna inspect that the visible part of the apron is not bent, cracked, or broken. We're gonna inspect that the trailer is lying flat on the fifth wheel skid plate and there is no space between the apron and the fifth wheel. We're gonna look at the locking jaw, secure around the kingpin shank, not cracked, bent, or broken. Looking at the locking release arm, secured in locked position, not cracked, bent, or broken. Fifth wheel sliding rail, properly greased, pins are through the holes, securing the fifth wheel in place and have proper distance between the back of the truck and landing gear. We're gonna inspect the landing gear, is fully raised, has no missing parts, the crank handle is secure, and the support frame and landing pads are not damaged. If power operated, inspects for air or hydraulic leaks. Next, we're looking at the side and rear of the vehicle from lights top to bottom, making sure that they're the proper color, clean, clear, not cracked, bent, or broken. We're also looking at the reflective tape, making sure that on the sides of the trailer and the back of the trailer are present, affixed securely to the trailer. I'm gonna check the lights, make sure that they're proper color, not cracked, bent, or broken. I'm gonna check that the reflective tape is present, clean, and adhered to the vehicle. 
I'm gonna check the bottom of the lights as well to make sure that they're not cracked, bent, or broken and that they're proper color. At this point, we have completed the new CDL modernized pre-trip inspection. Now let's go to the backing. 